All right, welcome teachers. We're so happy to have you here in one of our last Let's Learn Live sessions, part of the TESOL Electronic Village for 2022, um, brought to you by the Computer Assisted Language Learning Interest section. Um, you are welcome to have your cameras on during today's presentation if you would like. It's optional, not required. And we do ask that you please keep your microphones muted until we get to the question and answer period uh, towards the end of the session. Uh, and the session is being recorded and broadcast on our YouTube channel. And I will share that link here in the chat for you all. Uh, so you can find recordings of not only this session, but all other live sessions that we have conducted here in the Electronic Village this year, as well as past TESOL conventions and our webinars. So um, check it out and subscribe if you would like. And now we are at the top of the hour. So I am happy to introduce our presenter today, Amy Christensen. And she is going to be sharing some information about wordplay, exploring creativity and collaboration through music. So featuring artists from the American Music Abroad program, wordplay is an exciting tool that uses audio, music videos, and social media to bring music and English lyrics into your classroom. So we are gonna learn about this free resource and how it can inspire work with uh, the four C's and your students. So welcome, Amy. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to share this with you. Um, let me just share my screen and we can get started. All right. So yeah, today I'm gonna introduce you to Wordplay, which is an awesome resource to help you explore creativity and collaboration as you are teaching um, English language and possibly American culture. So the questions that I wanna answer for you today are what is wordplay? How can it help me? How have other instructors used it in their classrooms? How can I access wordplay? And where can I find out more? So what is Wordplay? Wordplay is an exciting program that is a collaboration between um, the American English program, and I am an alum of the English Language Fellows Program, um, the US Department of State, American Music Abroad, and American Voices to bring music and lyrics into English language classrooms around the world. And the best thing about this is that it is free. So I have a short little teaser sizzle reel video to introduce you just in one minute to help you to see the artists and learn a little bit more about wordplay before I dig in and show you how other teachers have used it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Spoken English has a certain flow to it. You gon' feel me. What up, though? Three, Ain't wanna. Three, we gone. Nine to five. Two, leap of faith. Three, from heart. Three, Trust four, yourself. One. Two, three. One. Two, three. Four, 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 one. Connecting with your audience is so important. What we fill our minds with matters. Using music to express yourself. And connect with each other. It's all right here. It's the real me, and you will feel me. Yep. So that gives you just a little taste of wordplay. Um, there are 12 wordplay artists and bands that represent a variety of musical genres. So there are singer songwriter kind of quieter pieces. There is jazz, there's pop, there's soul, there's country, there's rock, there's hip hop. There is something for everybody. Each wordplay artist or group has um, an artist bio, a glossary with vocabulary that's featured in the videos and in the song, a featured song, lesson plans that are ready to go for you in your classroom, video activities, snapshot activities, and a printable language package. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about each of those things. 
So the about the artist uh, has a couple of paragraphs that tell you um, kind of the root of the band, where they're from, how many members, what musical style they have, and sometimes other artists that they have played with. And there's also a link to the artist's homepage. And then for each artist or group, there's a list of the vocabulary words from the featured song and the videos. And those words are divided into CEFR categories so that you can pre-teach some of the words if you think students might not be familiar with it, um, or you can use it as a check after you've used these resources um, in a quiz. So you can either stream or download three different versions of the song. Um, one is the official music video so that um, everyone can see the musicians um, and see their instruments and see whatever they're trying to tell you through their video. Um, then we also have a lyrics only video. Uh, you can use that to maybe do karaoke with the students. And then we have the audio only version. So if you really want to focus on students listening skills, you have that available to you. So you can download to use them offline or you can stream them live from the website that I'm gonna share with you at the end of this presentation. The lesson plans are ready for you to use in the classroom. There's a simple summary at the top of what is going to happen in that lesson. Um, in the upper right hand corner, you can see it will tell you what level it's appropriate for. It tells you what, um, what audio or video is associated with the lesson plan. Then there's step by step description of what you need to do and even variations to make it more or less challenging or tips to help you um, try out this activity in an online setting. The really cool thing about this project is that in addition to the music, there are eight to 10 video interviews that are about two or three minutes long with the artists and or band members. So some of these focus on musical references or cultural references, maybe um, what inspired the video um, or differences between spoken or written English. And those also have lesson plans and activities. And if there's, um, there's a printable worksheet that that is associated with the activity. There's also an answer key for teachers. So I wanna show you an example of what these videos are like. So it gives you something that I think you, you don't get from a lot of other sources. And one of the things is an example of regional slang from the United States. So um, as you listen, see if you can fill in these blanks. So this is just two and a half minutes long and you are going to learn uh, two new slang um, phrases. So listen and see if you can fill in the blank. Wordplay. Word 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 what up, though? I'm Ben Will, and I'm a singer songwriter and the lead singer of the Ben Will Band. I am so excited to join you for Wordplay and talk about a line from my song, Blade of Grass. But before I start speaking about the song lyric, I want to talk about how I greeted you. I started this video with a popular regional greeting from my home city of Detroit, Michigan. Depending on where you're from, people may greet each other by saying hi, hello, or nice to see you. In Detroit, a popular way African-American or Black people greet others we're familiar with is with the phrase, what up, though? It's slang, a take on the greeting, what's up? But in Detroit, we started saying, what's up, though? Then we blended it with some rhythm and aspects of hip hop culture to create the greeting, what up though? If you listen to rap music, you may have heard the phrase before. Another use of a popular slang phrase can be found in the second verse of my song, Blade of Grass. In the second verse, I sing about the ways we can tap into our joy to combat the challenges life brings us. If you know, then you know, also known as if you know, you know, is a popular urban slang phrase that's sometimes even abbreviated as just I-Y-K-Y-K. -Y -K. It's usually used to reference something that is considered to just be inside information for a particular group of people. If you're in that group, then that means you have access to the information 
in the lyrics of my song, I attempted to take a spin on that phrase to invite people who may be on the outside of experiencing joy due to a challenging experience to join in on the practice of activating joy from within. I hope I was able to help you learn a little bit more about some of the regional slang phrases from the U.S. and especially from Detroit. Again, my name is Ben Will. Thank you for being a part of Wordplay. Peace. Okay, so I already see some of the answers in the chat, which is awesome. So what up though is regional slang from Detroit and it means hello or what's up. It's a greeting. Yes. <laughs> um, if you know, you know is abbreviated as I-Y-K-Y-K, -Y -Y which some of you already put in the chat. That's awesome. And what does it mean? It's a reference to inside information for a particular group of people. So now if we're going to talk about wordplay, now I can say, if you know, you know, to you, because now you get the reference. <laughs> Uh, another short video uh, resource that's a part of this project are the snapshots. So these are just very, very short, 30 seconds long, and the artists are responding to a question. So for example, here, Gina Chavez, she is asked, what are your hobbies? And she says, I love cycling, I love ping pong. So these are great activities for you to do as a quick um, beginner or ender activity, and also as an energizer, like if you feel like students are just getting a little sleepy, this can be another way to engage with them. So uh, I'm gonna show you an example of a quick snapshot, sorry, snapshot activity that you can do. Um, it's answering this question. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? So I'm gonna share with you what four of our wordplay artists, what their superpower would be. You can see if it compares and matches with yours. Oh, I would want to be invincible. I am the biggest wuss when it comes to any sort of physical injury or ailment. I just want to be able to skateboard down a windy mountain road at full speed without worrying about getting hurt. <laughs> All the superpowers that one might have, my personal one would be an omniglot. What's an omniglot? Someone who can speak all languages. I feel communication is the most important thing. And if one can master every single spoken language, that would be pretty awesome. Teleportation because I uh, want to travel and get places faster. Oh, if I had a superpower, if I were being you know, practical, I'd, I'd probably try and like clean up plastic waste in the ocean or something like that. Plastic cleanup man. <laughs> Okay, so now you just learned uh, what four superpowers uh, would be the superpower of choice for some of the wordplay artists. So this is a simple activity that you can do um, in the classroom. I call it stand where you stand. So you would read the question and students would move to a specific spot in the classroom that matches their answer. Usually I pick a corner for each one, but we are not in the classroom, right? We are in Zoom. So instead I'm gonna have you move to the corner of your screen that matches your answer. So of these four, which would you choose? Uh, upper left, right? Um, if it's invincibility, upper right for omniglot, lower left for teleportation, lower right for plastic cleanup man. So what is yours? I can see that we have a lot of omniglots, not surprised about that one. Since we're all language teachers, we've got some teleportation. Man, would I love that because then I could teleport to TESOL and see everybody there. We could all do that. Um, other teleportations I see, omniglots, yes, clean up the environment, some invincibility, awesome. So that's just a way that you can take something like a little 30 second clip and make it into something that is an activity for your students. So uh, for all of the lessons, you can download everything as one um, 
lesson package or you can do the individual lessons. So you can look and if there's a specific activity that you wanna do um, that's associated with a specific video, you can just download that activity or you can download the whole thing as one PDF, go through it and find what works for you. Each printable lesson package has that list of relevant vocabulary, just a simple glossary divided by CEFR categories, full song lyrics, pre-listening or pre-viewing activities that you can do before the students listen to the song or watch a video, activities that students can do while listening to a song or watching a video. So some examples are like a lyric scramble, um, a gap fill or short question and answer, and then some activities that they can do after they listen to the song or after they watch a video. So this is an example of something creative that you can do, and it's a post-listening activity. So it's using an idiomatic expression from the song Till Further Notice. And first it's asking um, questions just to get that kind of background knowledge activated. So where is the wick of a candle? What do you think of when you look at a candle? What do you think the song lyric keeping the wick of hope lit means? And then draw your own candle, write a sentence about a hope or wish you have. So you could do this all in one setting. You could assign the drawing as homework. You could assign the whole thing as homework and talk about it the next day. Um, but you can see how this, not only are the students learning some of these expressions and learning English, um, but they also have a chance to be creative with some of these activities. This is a picture um, of a student who did this activity. So they um, wrote what their hope was. And this song specifically is about um, COVID. And so they were able to express their feelings about that time. Um, so this came from a secondary school teacher. This was his uh, assignment. So he said, we know music has an impact on people, but we never really noticed how powerful that can be. My students' vocabulary is limited but they were able to understand what the song was about with just one listen. Till further notice was an incredible journey. We wish people would make more songs like this one. Um, other students have really liked, or other students, other teachers have really liked the lyric scramble. I guess the students have too. So this teacher from, from Senegal was saying that the students really liked the lyric scramble. So they get sections of the lyrics and they have to listen and put them in the correct order. And then at the end, they can use that to sing the song. So we call that a lyric scramble. You can also do a lyric scramble in an online class. I know the last presentation was about Google Jamboard. So uh, a university lecturer from Indonesia used Jamboard and did a lyric scramble on Jamboard for uh, an online class. Um, other instructors have really liked how much they can use this for student discussions and to talk about the main idea of a song using the lyrics and learning new expressions including slang like we saw but also things like phrasal verbs and idioms and then being able to have a little debate about the music uh, a teacher from india told us that her students came up with a jingle using one of the idioms that the they learned from the song because she has um, budding singers and poets in her class, which I think is awesome. And then some uh, teachers have also had their students write poetry, which is another um, activity that we have where students are inspired to write their own poems or to do their own drawings. And so people have just Teachers from all over the world already have found the lessons and the music to be really great and to help them save time because we know that you're busy and you want to engage with your students and your students want to learn um, real authentic English. So just to wrap up before we do Q&A, um, there's 12 wordplay artists representing all these different categories that you can find on the website. Uh, there's an artist bio, a glossary, a featured song, lesson plans, videos, and video activities, snapshot activities, and a printable language package for each artist. And in that language package, there is the vocabulary, the full song lyrics, pre-listening um, activities, activities you can do while listening, and post-listening or post-viewing activities. So if you wanna learn more about these resources, I know that this was already put in the chat, um, but you can go to the lyricsproject.org or americanenglish.state.gov because this is a collaboration project. So both of those are great resources for you to find a ton of things that you can use in the classroom. 
So my question now is what questions do you have? And I will try my best to answer them. <laughs> Well, I am excited about wordplay, Amy. Thank you so much for giving us this overview and um, for showing some demo videos and the wide range of resources that are ready to go for you teachers right now. Um, and as I mentioned in the chat, I love that these are all able to be used um, and downloaded um, so you don't have to have an internet connection active in your classroom while you use them, which is always a plus. Um, so let's see, I see a question from Vicki in the chat asking about um, ages and um, sort of levels that this material is for. Yeah, um, I would say the ages would be like middle school all the way up to you know, college and the levels, we have some activities that are specifically geared for beginners and some that are for intermediate or advanced students. And we also have um, some activities where we'll say less challenging or more challenging. So if you think that the main activity is too easy or too difficult, we have suggestions for how to adjust it. Super. Um, I see a question from Sam about the two uh, websites. Is there a difference? They will take you to the same place, Sam. Thank you for that question. Uh, a question from Sarah asking about, is there a recommended order from for the lessons? Is there um, any kind of sequence within the information on the website as a unit? Sure. Well, generally, if you download the whole package, um, you will see that they have like the pre listening and the lyrics and the vocabulary first, and then the activities that you can do while listening to the song or watching the videos, um, and then the post listening stuff after. But really, you know, it's it's up to you. If you go on the website, the very first thing that, that you'll see when you click on an artist is the song. Uh, and then it has uh, the extra videos that are where the artist is speaking directly to the students um, and the activities that go with that. Uh, and then down at the bottom usually are the snapshots. Those are those short little 30 second activities. Excellent. Um, Pamela wants to know if this project is complete or will additional artists be joining in the future? Thank you for that question, Pamela. Right now, um, it's about half of the artists are released and we're releasing about one a month. Um, so if it's something that you like, you can come back each month and learn more about a new artist. Excellent, always keeping it fresh. And I'm guessing you're going to have uh, even more musical genres or categories represented as you make additions. I really hope so. I saw somebody said reggaeton and I would love that. <laughs> so I, I hope that they expand and do some more genres in the future. Excellent. Uh, Chris wants to know your favorite song in this awesome package and what would you recommend that users start with? Man, that's so hard. Um, I think that Seth Glyer is a really easy one to start with because the song is a little bit slower and it's also really relevant because it's about living through COVID and we've all just been doing and are doing that. And so I think that's a really great one to start with. It's just kind of kind of mellow and, and it's easy for everybody to understand. Um, otherwise, if you're looking for something really positive, Ben Will's Blade of Grass is like super fun and a really positive song. Great recommendations. Uh, Elizabeth is curious about how the project selects the singers and which songs to use. Sure, um, the artists apply uh, to be part of um, the group. And I will be honest, I am not part of that selection process. So I'm not sure what, <laughs> how they're deciding, but I do know they're looking like, is the song you know, appropriate? Um, is it something that teaches us about you know, American culture in some way. I know that they really like things um, that will teach like a cultural point or that are unique. Like maybe we don't have a country band or we don't have a bluegrass artist. Um, so I think there's lots of things that they consider when choosing um, an artist or a band, but the artists choose us, they apply. Nice, I like that. Um, there is a, a related question here from Sandy, and she wants to know, um, in relation to the appropriateness that you just mentioned, are there any songs that might work for younger learners? Yeah, um, I think we do. I, so I don't know how young she's thinking. Um, like I said, it is kind of aimed at like, you know, middle school, high school, college. Um, and so you definitely do want to preview it first, but you know, there's not like any inappropriate language. Um, we make sure that there's, there's not that and um, that there's 
nothing that would be really objectionable, I guess. But um, let me think who would be good. I think uh, for younger learners, maybe maybe Ben Will, maybe Tony Memel um, would be another, another good one for younger learners. Great. And as with any resource as a teacher, I think previewing the content and making sure um, that it's a good fit uh, culturally and content wise um, is something that we all always want to try to do. So um, there is a lot to explore for you teachers out there. So feel free to, um, to preview that content before you use with students. Let me just see if we have any other questions. We have still about five minutes. So keep them coming if you have more. Um, let's see, earlier Monica asked, would this be useful, perhaps maybe in an ESL context, maybe somebody who's speaking in an English language dominant or majority language um, location, would this be uh, useful for students who've lived in the US for a long time? Uh, definitely, I think so. And one of the re reasons is that video that I showed you where there's regional English. So maybe if students are living in you know, the South, for example, they can learn a little bit about, hey, what does English sound like in Detroit? Um, also the artists talk about their city in those Snapchats videos and in some of the other ones. So students can learn about different parts of the US, different genres of music, um, what the American experience is like for different people living in different parts of the United States. That is an important point. Um, the United States, just like any country out there isn't one culture. There are micro cultures, regional cultures, um, and language evolves, right? English is always changing. So maybe some slang that some um, additional language learners might have used or learned about when they first moved to the US, maybe things have changed. I know um, that I am always keeping up with new terms and slangs um, and I've been speaking English for a very long time. Um, so I think that um, content like this can be beneficial to everyone. Yeah, I love that too. And that's one of the real um, like jewels, I think, of this resource is that you have those interviews with the artists. So they, the students are able to hear this real authentic version of American English. And we know like that's what they want, that if they come here, they meet an American to be able to speak in that natural way. Yeah, um, one question that I had is, um, with regional dialects and cultural groups, maybe this is kind of a, a complicated question. How can our students know when it's appropriate to use certain maybe regional dialect um, items that might be unique to a cultural group? Yeah, I think, you know, some of that may be something that you need to bring up with your students, but also like, as you can see in, in the video, the artists are saying that too, right? So, so Ben Will said, you know, this is something that we use in Detroit and it tends to be, you know, African-American or black Americans that use this more, or it's used in hip hop, for example. So a lot of it is in the videos themselves um, mm -hmm. where they'll say like, this is the context where it's used. Yeah, great. That's helpful information. I, I was glad to see that in the video. Um, and so sometimes um, there might be language that we don't produce ourselves, but that it is still um, helpful to have an awareness of the meaning and the context of the group or person that is communicating. So um, yeah. helpful either way. Well, we are reaching the end of our session. Amy, Thank you for sharing this amazing project um, with our very full Zoom room. We are full to capacity. If awesome. you know anybody that um, was not able to attend, this session was also live streamed on the uh, YouTube channel uh, for Call IS. Let me pull up that um, address for hey, everyone. Excuse me? Yep. Do you have a question? How can I help? Um, uh, I will set this link my family got sent this by the lawyer. Uh, is this the Juvie Unlawful Act, Juvie no. Unlawful Act Therapy? I am afraid you're in the wrong spot, Jess. Thanks for uh, joining us. All right, well, um, so I'm, I'm sharing here the uh, YouTube link here. It's tinyurl.com um, and you can see the extension there, call AS YouTube. And um, you will be able to uh, review this presentation 
um, and also visit the link that has been shared in the chat. I will put it in there one more time um, and a big round of applause to our presenter today, Amy Christensen. Thank you for your work on this project and thank you for uh, sharing it with us and the Electronic Village today. Thank you. All right, and thank you audience. Um, Again, I'm really happy to see your contributions and suggestions and ideas um, in the chat. Um, so keep those coming. You are welcome to stick around here. We have another uh, session here to close out our Let's Learn Live and the Electronic Village um, that will begin in just one minute. So let me help those presenters get set and we will start our next session momentarily. Thank you all for attending. All right, let me find, there we have Kara. And looking for Jose. Hello. Hi, Kara or Kara? Um, either way, I say Kara. Okay, perfect. I am happy to do the same. And do you see uh, Jose here in the list? Um, I have him on signal. Let me just... Hi, Heather's just looking for you in the Zoom room. Oops. It might have been full right when he was trying room. to have join. Have you been able to join? We have space now, so he can try again if it was not able. All right, everyone, thank you all uh, for being in attendance. Uh, we're going to begin our next session here in one or two minutes. We're waiting to get one of our uh, presenters all settled? Yes, and um, just in case there's a problem, I'm gonna move my copy of the assign of the PowerPoint over to my Mac side. I'm on a dual boat system and all my stuff is on the other side. Right. Jose's, Jose's unable to join. Okay, and for those of you who are waiting, if you need something to do for just a moment, you can participate in today's Electronic Village Mentimeter polls. Um, this hopefully will give you some ideas about how you might use e-polling in the classroom. And I will also share where you can see the results uh, so you can see what your colleagues are, are thinking as well. And yes, Jose just responded, He um, he's joining right now. Super, we'll get him. So we should see now. him shortly. I see it. a, um, Jose Pineda, but I'm looking for Jose Franco. Yeah, let me see if I can invite him via Gmail. Oh, there we are, I see you, Jose. Let okay, me promote perfect. you. Perfect. Hi, how are you doing? Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. All right, you are now- Heather, how are you doing? I'm doing really Good well, Jose. You. So great to see you and Cara here. Okay, well, let me introduce the two of you and we will get started. Perfect. Okay, so um, welcome back to those of you who have been here with us before and uh, welcome to teachers who might be joining us here for the first time in the Electronic Village, uh, part of TESOL 2022, uh, brought to you by the Computer Assisted Language Learning Interest Section. Um, this is going to be our last Let's Learn Live session for the convention, and we are happy to have you here with us. Um, this session is being recorded and also being live broadcast on the Call IS YouTube channel, and I'll share how you can find that information later. All right, so without further ado, I am really excited to introduce Cara McDonald and Jose Franco who are here today and going to talk to us about Youglish, um, a tool to enhance pronunciation and listening comprehension. And they point out that traditionally uh, pronunciation teaching um, can uh, focus often on isolated words and that can affect our listening comprehension um, and that words spoken in context, usually they sound different than if you're listening to them in isolation. 
Um, so teaching words uh, pronunciation wise in context is essential. And those are some of the concepts they are going to cover with us today. So I will turn things over to the two of you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And Jose, when you're ready, you can share your screen. Okay. Go ahead. Open, you can open the presentation. Sure. So I am trying to share my screen. It's not permitting me. Fine. Give me just a moment. I'll cancel and share screen again. Window possibly. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna remove for a moment what we see now and I will get us our PowerPoint. Uh, is everyone seeing the PowerPoint? Not Slide yet. Yet, Not yet. Not yet. Oops, hold on one moment. Not yet. Oops, hold on. Uh, maybe I just shared, maybe I didn't ask it to share the, the entire screen. There we go. Let's see if that does it again. And now possibly, do you see a slide deck? Not yet, but no worries. Mm -hmm. Zoom, Zoom issues happen to us all. Okay. So just let's go back to the basics here. So I'm in Zoom, share screen. And I'm asking it to share my entire screen. And I'm clicking share. Do we see no. a PowerPoint? No. What, um, um, Heather, maybe. what What if I put it in um, the chat? I can do it. I can do it. I can do it here. Um, OK, so if you can share, that would be great. Or if it's a file you can drop to me, I will get it up for you, too. We'll make this work. Yeah. OK. OK, just let me um, look for the presentation. And, uh, and thanks, everyone in the audience. For yes, thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> As you know, technical challenges uh, happen and we will work through it. Exactly. And our presentation is concise, okay. so it'll be easy to adapt to the missing. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sharing the, I'm opening the presentation. All right. And we've got it, Jose. It looks good. Thanks. Ah, perfect. Thank you, Jose. We're going to transform ourselves. You're going to fix it. Thank you, Jose. I was planning on Don't doing worry. it as I have a, a stronger um, Wi-Fi connection, but who knows what's going on with my device. So can, you, can you see it? Yeah. Um, All right. What I, actually, um, Heather, I'm going to drop it into um, the chat. And if you could, um, let's see, if you could share it, because if Jose If Jose shows his screen, he's going to lose his connectivity. Oh, it's fine. Oh, okay, it's fine. It's Looks fine. Just, just, just let me know when, when when I need to move the presentation, the slide, and that's it. All, all right, right, let's go. I'll start. Let's do it. Thanks. So, okay, thank you all for bearing with our technical difficulties. I'll make sure that I'll be a little more concise so that um, you'll have time with Jose because he's going to go over the app with you. So as Heather shared, traditional pronunciation, when we um, are looking at words in isolation, often um, students won't recognize the words when they're in connected speech because there are word boundaries, which are actually just the convention of the written language, where when we speak, there's a lot of blending, insertion, and other types of um, pronunciation changes at each of the word boundaries. Next slide, please. Um, so this creates a big gap between what students learn and when they practice what they can actually understand from native speakers or even their you know, their learners in their classroom. So they need to practice and focus on 
continuous speech so they can understand where one sound ends and the next sound begins is almost impossible to kind of determine or decipher, um, and especially for language learners. Next slide. So what we are gonna um, kind of look at is uh, how we can teach pronunciation in context, which makes their speech more natural as well as building their listening comprehension. So the two go hand in hand. Next slide, please. And what we'll be looking at is um, several sort of changes or alterations to speech at word boundaries. Next slide, please, if possible. There might be a little delay. So maybe just through the delay of being um, international. <laughs> um, okay, cool. I was just going to say I can start talking about it before it comes. So we have assimilation. Um, so where the um, last sound of one word will actually blend into the sound of the sound of the first, the next following word. We have elazon, where there's an assimilation that operates at word boundary, and as a consequence, there's the elazon removes um, a particular sound. We also have situations, I know we've lost the slide deck, he'll come back. We also have situations where there are intrusive R's, so an R sound that doesn't exist because of the manner and place of articulation. The sounds get inserted. We also have situations where an, a sound of j or y is inserted at a word boundary, again, because of the nature of the place and manner of articulation. And we can move um, forward one more. And we have weakening sounds, so the, the, this um, syllable becomes less stressed when or even reduce so that it makes the, the combination of the sounds seem um, different from how they have, be, have they been memorized. So for example, we have and, but oftentimes we'll turn it into a weak schwa for the sound and our D gets dropped. And you can see various examples there. Next slide, please. Just saving more time for um, Jose to be able to share the app with you. Contractions, we're all familiar about how the blending and insertion, sorry, deletion of a sound um, comes up. So I am becomes I'm. Next slide, please. Liaison, we talked about this in terms of a linking of a sound. Um, so we have law and order. So we kind of insert that in order. Um, and you can see, I agree, there's an insertion um, of a, a J and the same thing with go on. There's an insertion of a W and the, the changing of the vowel sound. Next slide, please. Um, we spoke about this a little briefly um, when the slide deck went away about the linking of an R. The R at the end goes over to the first um, vowel of the following word, we have an intrusive R where the R sound actually comes in when it's actually not there. All of these are due to the, um, the place of articulation and manner of articulation of the surrounding um, word boundaries. Next slide, please. And this is our last one before Jose is gonna show you the app. We have an insertion of a, um, J and W, so you can see um, he is, he is, I agree. So we have this insertion of a Y sound. Um, and on the bottom, you can see an insertion of um, the W W sound, you are. Um, next slide, please. So moving to um, the app. So these are just general types of um, changes at word boundaries and all of us are teachers. So I wanted to allow more time for Jose. Um, he's going to take an opportunity to take you to the Euglis site and show you how you can use it in your classroom. The floor is yours.
is muted. Is muted. Jose, Jose, you're muted. I'll let him know on signal. You are muted. <laughs> Multiple devices sometimes useful. He's still okay, muted. Can you hear me clearly right now? Yeah, it's okay. Still? Really? Is it okay now? Yes. Yes. yes it's All right. Good now. Thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, this is basically uh, what what Juglish is about. Okay. Uh, it is a free app. Everyone can use it. It is it's really easy to use. And uh, the first thing you, you're going to see is the search engine, um, which is basically um, the place where, where you write, where you type the phrase or word you, you want to look for. And uh, I'm, I'm going to show you how it works. Um, Juglish it works uh, as a corpus, OK? But in, in this case, it, it's not a written corpus in which you can see samples of the term and word used, but here you will be able to find a lot of examples, oral examples of words in, in use. Um, let's take a look, for example, um, I'm going to uh, look for lot of, for example. And uh, I click on say it or enter and you can see the number, the frequency number of samples of that phrase in particular. And uh, the app is going to show you, okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. The app is going to show you um, all the examples of that phrase or word in context. Uh, for example, here, um, this is the first video um, that, that the, the search um, is showing. So it is loading, but you will see here uh, a person in this place. That's the person uh, using the word in contest. All right. Do you have a menu in which you can uh, replay, you can go back, and play again the the phrase or the word in context even you can skip it but also you will be able uh, to see the caption window in which you can read what is being spoken um, in the main window so uh, this allows for uh, two types of things uh, basically you can see how words are, um, are written and on the other hand, you can see how words, uh, you can learn collocations, you can, you can learn um, something else uh, here. It's not also listening to the word that you are trying to, to look for. Um, if you uh, move uh, through the app, and if, if, you, if you register on the app, you will be able to share to save your samples of, uh, of oral language. For example, I'm going to show you how, how that menu works. All right. So um, once you save any video or any videos, uh, you will be able to look for them uh, or to see them again in, in this way, my content. I say whatever you need to say, but make your order to record all your um, your for example, I'm going to look for another word like get, yeah, for example. Oh, 
Okay. We may have lost Jose. Um, I'll step in. Um, so let me pull up Uglish. Oh, I've been having trouble sharing my screen though, but let me see. Um, just a moment. Let me see and um, let me share my... Um, it looks like uh, Jose is uh, resharing. Um, as okay. you all know, sometimes uh, we do run into uh, bandwidth issues if we're showing video and talking in our video. Um, so thank you again in the audience for your, your patience with that. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. And um, there is an issue. It may be um, also just the bandwidth, the distance. Um, so I'll speak while while he's um, looking and trying to okay. get back with us. Oh, okay, are you with us? Okay, thank you very much. All right. Oh, so as I told you before, um, you will be able to um, record your voice, your own voice, and and keep such records. And also, there there is another function here um, that is nearby words. Um, you, you will have um, samples of pronunciation of that word you're, you're, you're trying to look for, to look for. You will be fine nearby words. These are words, uh, alike words, like, like the um, target words you, you are looking for. So get, you, you have gats, gatly, um, goddess, gathead, gut lines. Uh, you got a lot of examples to practice, but also the app shows you um, um, the way uh, the pronunciation of that word is written using the um, traditional international phonetical alphabet or the modern international phonetical, phonetical alphabet. And also um, regarding uh, the target word, uh, the app um, provides tips to improve your English pronunciation uh, in relation to that word uh, you are trying to learn. Um, the menu uh, has another interesting uh, feature that is the advanced um, options. For example, um, I'm going to, I, I'm trying to look for the word, for example, freedom. And if I need, or somebody needs uh, to look for that word um, uh, in particular, but I need the pronunciation from a man or from a woman, I, I use um, a type of white cards, for example, um, if I want that words, but pronounced by a woman. I use this. And all the samples of that word is going to be uh, pronounced by women in general. And let's try to. Um, so yeah, to the colon it. plus F, and if it was a male, the colon plus M. The degrees of freedom. N1 minus one, N2 minus one, four, alpha over two. I'm sorry. Okay. Another particular option uh, for this app is not only of, um, the gender, um stuff but also if you if you need to look for for the contents in which the term words or phrase is is spoken you can you can select it too all right so uh, if you go to advanced search uh, you will be able to um find for example uh word class word uh, uh, class, work, um, phrase class, gender, and context. All right, let's um, take a look, for example, I'm going to click on power uh, with the word uh, Clinton in parentheses. 
All right? So let's take a look uh, at what happens here. I have uh, 582 samples of that person who is in this case is Clinton talking about power. There as well, because okay. it is clear that- So we have Hillary Clinton talking about power, but also if I change uh, the name or, the, or a situation in particular, uh, um, the search is going to show uh, those specific results I'm trying to look for and trying to find. All right. I'm actually optimistic. Um, we're on the right track with the Affordable Care Act. So, guys, um, um, this is basically what um, this app is about. And we would like to know whether you have some um, um, questions regarding the presentation. Um, and Jose, uh, just while we're waiting for questions to come maybe in the chat, um, do you want to share like maybe ways that you, we've used it in our classroom as well as maybe in terms of like homework practice, just to um, give some application since we seem to have a few minutes, just in right. case we don't have any questions, we might as well use the time. Do you want me to show the app again? Uh, no, I just thought maybe you could discuss, I don't see any questions coming in, so I thought we could use the time, just a couple minutes, how you've used it in your classroom um, with your students, like what kind of activities you've maybe done just to give people some ideas or assigned it for homework practice. How have you used it with your students? Oh, yes. Basically, um, uh, this app uh, allows for a lot of independence in terms, in terms of uh, um, learn because uh, you, you, you can tell um, if well, you can uh, show this up to uh, your student for them to practice, all right? And if you're teaching specific vocabulary or, or um, specific words, or also uh, if you are teaching your students how to teach in context and you use it. And since you can save all the samples that you wish uh, uh, to listen to or uh, all the samples that you wish your students to learn, uh, you can keep them and you can use it in the classroom. And uh, the first, uh, the most important thing here uh, is that before um, bringing the app to the classroom, it is necessary that our students uh, receive some orientations on how to use the app efficiently and for them to um, gain independence in terms of learning. Thank you. Thank you. And I've been just answering some things in the chat and Heather's been helping us as well. So that's great. Um, we do have, we have, a, oh, I was just going to hop in. Oh, and, so we have like two or three minutes. <laughs> uh, I was just going to bring in a couple of more questions um, mm -hmm. about Oh, the fact that there are ads on the site, yes, as we all know, um, a lot of times with free or freemium uh, resources on the web, there can be advertising material or clickbait things that um, look tempting to, to uh, click on. So always good if we are asking our students to use these as individuals on their own, um, that maybe depending on the age and the context, you share a bit of advice about avoiding clicking on any of that and focusing on the resource. Um, and we, let's see, have a question from Vivian about, can you also look for expressions instead of just single words? And I think that that is a yes, you can look for groups of words, correct? Yeah, yes. phrases, yeah. not only uh, words in isolation, but those phrases. Excellent. And have you all, question from me, um, seen in terms of the types of video content that is on the site, have you ever run into something that might be uh, maybe tricky or inappropriate for um, certain groups of learners, or is it mostly um, content that is classroom appropriate? Okay, uh, the, the, the app basically um, showed uh, a content um, related to education or humanities. Uh, so, uh, there is no 
uh, uh, for our students to uh, um, to watch any inappropriate content. So uh, that's one of the advantage of this app. Yeah. We ran into so, a little bit of an audio issue there, Jose. So, so if I, I, can just, I, I can summarize, yeah, that that it is it is a um, the okay. corpus is set around um, something that would be used in the classroom. Um, I think um, Munther Zoid has his hand up. Is that, yes, is uh, I would like to ask. Like uh, in the beginning, you said that uh, it's good to teach pronunciation through context, and I agree with you uh, in that. So uh, do you think that this program or this uh, you, uh, English uh, will help the students if we are teaching them something in the, in the classroom where the teacher has to uh, emphasize or to stress some words and uh, the way he is pronouncing it can be shown, uh, can be seen by the students. So to what extent that this program can help uh, teaching the curriculum we are teaching in the classroom? Okay, so if you actually um, are working within a very rigid curriculum, so, you know, across the globe, our education systems for English vary greatly. Um, so some curriculums are very rigid, kind of lockstep because they're gearing the, geared them towards a standardized exam. In contexts like that, you might um, need to um, kind of create maybe one hour a week where it's something that you can kind of you know, kind of take out something from the, the standard curriculum and work in um, a little pronunciation activity. Um, if your students are old enough, you can easily assign it as a like a an extra credit, extra work, extra homework in different kinds of ways. So um, Jose and I work at um, the university level and the curriculum is very flexible for us to use a lot of different technology. Um, yes, there's a curriculum, but it's more flexible. So I understand yeah. if you're working in a context that would be a context with a rigid curriculum, it is a concern. Um, my answer would be like always, teachers need to be creative in the way we kind of massage the demands of the curriculum and our needs of wanting to bring technology into the classroom. Great point, Cara, definitely. Um, finding maybe bits and pieces um, that you could use in relation to your existing curriculum um, can definitely be an approach there or um, using it for um, spot issues if there is a certain collocation or blend that um, maybe yeah. your students are having a tricky time with, you could bring it out for a quick mini lesson. So um, it seems like a flexible tool for you to apply as best fits the needs in your classroom. All right, well, it looks like we are getting towards the end of our time here. I've been trying to answer questions as they've been coming in from our engaged audience. I'm um, seeing a lot of thank you notes coming in. So uh, we appreciate that. Um, and as I said earlier, uh, we appreciate your patience as we worked through some of the technical issues. If you'd oh, like yeah. to go back and review uh, segments of this presentation, it will be on the American English, or excuse me, the uh, community computer assisted language learning interest section uh, YouTube channel later today available for your review along with all of the other um, videos from the electronic village uh, let's live live sessions and many other presentation types so um, before I close out I do want to say a big thank you to you Cara and to you Jose thank you for joining us thank today you thank you for the opportunity together. and yes. um one regards from Venezuela. Yes, exactly. We Thank stand you. with Ukraine, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you all for attending and definitely Heather. Um, yeah, as you can see, um, Jose's in Venezuela. So the bandwidth there and the bandwidth with TESOL, you put them together, we get a little bit of delay, but uh, we're good to go. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Um, I will close out here in just a moment. I did want to share before we leave um, information for staying in touch with the Computer Assisted Language Learning Interest Section or Call IS as we are known within TESOL. Um, you can find ways to connect with us via social media there and our website. 
Um, and if you are interested in learning more about our work in the Coal IS, maybe you want to volunteer, maybe you'd like to be a future presenter at one of our events. Um, I just shared in the chat a link to our open meeting, our annual open meeting, so you can find out about uh, the professional development that we offer year round uh, for teachers around the world, all free of charge, of course. Um, we hope you will join us and uh, that will be at 3.30 Eastern US time. So you might have to uh, pull out a time converter application to figure out uh, what time that is where you are today. Um, but it will be right here in this Zoom room in, it looks like, let's see, I'm having to do time conversion too. It is uh, in about one and a half hours here in Zoom room one in the Electronic Village. Um, I have learned so much from all of you um, this over the past couple of days. So thank you for participating in Let's Learn Live. And uh, we hope to see you in the future in the Electronic Village. Take care, everyone. <laughs>